right. So carrying on with the basics. And what we're going to focus on now is several methods, or throughout the year, we're going to try and cover as many little methods as well as the little important things when it comes to basics. And first up, with it being flipping freezing still, we thought it's the perfect opportunity to run through the basics of... I'm not going to say my favourite, but a method I'm very, very partial to during the winter with the pegs I draw, and that is dobbing, which massively, massively important way of fishing during the winter when them carp simply do not want to eat any bait. It's probably the only way you catch them for a massive portion of most matches you fish. So dobbing, really, really basic, as it says, all we're after is suspending or fishing uh, a single hook bait in the areas of your peg. I mean, it's brilliant for not upsetting your peg, so you can drop your rig pretty much anywhere with the chance of getting a bite without spoiling the areas of your peg by introducing bait all over the place. So as it says, it's about dobbing a single piece, a single item of bait. Probably three different types of bait I'd do. I'd either fish it with bread, maggots or corn. They're the three options. I said, what I'm looking at is on a peg like this, approaching different areas with features. So features are nine out of 10 times the areas that you want to be targeting because it's where the fish are most likely to be held up during the winter. And it's just about dobbing one of those three baits, depending on what I feel like in them three areas, trying to locate fish before they actually have a feed later on in the day. So really, really simple. Them three baits, let's focus on them a little bit first, the type of bait I'm going to choose. As I mentioned, bread and maggots and my go-to, they're the two baits that I'll pick 99 times out of 100. I mean, bread is often my first choice, which is brilliant. So I will often talk about the type of bread. Orange Warbreeze, the best bread in the world for dobbing. Due to tackiness, thickness, whatever else, it is the perfect bread when it comes to dobbing. What I'm looking at doing is just using a bread punch. Really, really simple, and ideally a bread punch that compresses it. I mean, I'd much rather have a, a punch, a brass punch in this case, that compresses my bread. I don't want a hollow tube type punch that ends up with a lovely fluffy piece of bread because it doesn't sink quite as well. And what I'm after doing is just simply punching either a six, eight or 10 millimeter piece of bread, depending on the size of fish and whatever size I think the fish are wanting on the day. Let me whiz him out. You see there, lovely compressed piece. In that case, I've got an eight mil piece of bread. And what it does, it produces a lovely little punch that can be used on the hook. Let me try and stab my fingers getting this out. You can see lovely little hook bait there. This is perfect for, as the name suggests, dobbing around your peg. So the one thing that you find with bread though, it is not very resilient, if you like. I mean, you find it swells up really, really quickly. So what happens is if you move your rig too quickly, strike it a bite, it'll often come off your hook. It's also for me, probably the number one bait that can be a bit of a pain for nuisance fish. I mean, during the winter, those little fish are also in the little areas of your peg, in the little features, and them little diddy roach are right on a piece of bread when it goes in. So they can cause problems. And in that case, what I'd want to swap to is probably maggots. That's my second bait that I choose for dobbing. So bread's definitely first. If anything's an issue, I'll swap to maggots. Normally three or four maggots on a hook. Just a more resilient bait for whatever reason. I mean, less prone to getting eaten by the tiny fish because it's a bit of a bigger bait. But you can just, it's more, it's durable, isn't it? That's the word to use. I can strike a lot more with it. It'll last on my hook pretty much until it gets eaten. I mean, I can strike, flick it about, do what I want with it, not worry about my bait coming off. But both of those baits as well can be suspended uh, off the bottom without upsetting your bristle too much, as in they won't um, overwhelm your rig. Yeah, they're not too heavy. A nice swollen up piece of bread or three maggots doesn't have enough weight in it to sink most floats, as long as using a sensible float, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Lastly, my last dobbing bait would be corn. I mean, big, big fan of dobbing with corn, but a little bit different to maggots and bread that you can fish off the bottom. With corn, for me, I'd fish it as a static bait on the bottom. So I may plumb up a few areas in my peg and just drop in a single piece of corn on the bottom. But same rig, same everything, nothing fancy about it. Just it's not a bait that can be suspended because it'll probably sink your float. So really simple when it comes to bait choices. Next, rig. And this is as simple as it can possibly get when it comes to dobbing. Nothing fancy about it whatsoever. I'm going to start the top end and the proper go through everything. In the elastic, again, really, really, really simple. Yeah, depending on the size of fish that you're fishing for, I go nice and sensible in either I'll have an 8 to 10 solid, uh, 8 to 10 uh, hybrid, or I'll use a, what are we doing? We've got a bite then. Uh, 8 to 10 if the fish are a bit smaller, I haven't got to pull too hard, or a 10 to 12 if there's a few more fish in my bag and I need to pull, get them away from snags, things like that. But err on the side of being nice and positive. Like, I mean, you're not fishing little, really delicate components on your rig. You're fishing a bit more positive than you would in most cases in the winter. So you can use a nice positive elastic to get them fish out of where you want them and up, not upset the shoal. Uh, main line, really, really simple. Yeah, 100% of the time when I'm dobbing, I use 070 main line. 
yeah again durable and put my rig near snags the last thing i want is it to get caught and lose my rig i mean i want my hook to snap instead and hook length in most situations so other than when it's really really snaggy i might step it up a bit but 012 the perfect thing for dobbing yeah you don't want to really go any lighter just because you, you're going to hook them big bonus fish doing it it's what you're targeting so the last thing i want to do is hook a 10 pounder and lose it because i'm fishing too light a line so 012 for dobbing definitely i don't i've never felt any situation where i've got to go any lighter so as you can see rig as well itself really really simple big long length of line so it's not a rig that you're dictated to a short length of line between your float and your pole you can have three four five foot you can have whatever you want as long as the wind's not upsetting your rig too much so in today's case i've got a nice three foot which means i can move that rig all over the place i mean if i want to dob in deeper water i can just use same rig move it up and i'm away yeah alternatively i can shallow it to whatever depth i think the fish may be feeding and shot in simple as in fact float first I, I, I best not brush over on the float and rugby ball style floats i mean by far the best for me dobbing you don't want the the stupid sensitively we got a fishy you don't want the stupid sensitive floats with little delicate bristles i want something a bit more positive i mean i'm suspending a bait nine times out of ten so the bites are going to look good anyway I mean, it's a tight line you're gonna see the bites really good so nice slim carbon stem i find carbon these days far better than um, wire stem floats for dobbing again just more durability when you put it in the snags and a decent bristle yeah size of bristles it's a little bit technical but it needs to be thought about when dobbing you don't want anything too thin hollow bristles are brilliant normally a 1.5 to 2 mil yeah depending on the conditions but anywhere between a 1.5 millimeter and a 2 mil bristle nice and hollow just shows it up i mean there's no need for really delicate fine kit on this and that float does it perfect either in a 410s or 412 size depending on the wind I mean, it's nice and calm i'm fishing nice and shallow 410s anywhere above three foot i might use a 412s the shot in regardless of the si um, size of float exactly the same in that simply i have a bulk of 99 percent or 95 percent of the float shot in capacity in this case with stots i'm a big fan of stots when it comes to dobbing uh, for reasons i'll show you in a second but 95 percent of the floats shot in capacity is underneath it and then i literally have one two or three number 12s down the line yeah depending on the depth probably for every foot i'll probably have an extra number 12 just to keep it a little bit tight just to stay in contact but in today's case where i'm fishing at about two and a half foot i've literally got two number 12s and say so that bulk by using stops on it all the time instead of shot it's one time that if i were to move my float up and go to say three and a half foot what i'd do is i might leave one of those number 10s behind and take the rest up there so with shot i can't do that with stops i can whiz them all over the place they don't damage my line and i say it's a nice versatile rig if i'm completely honest my dobbing rigs often last me the whole of the winter i'll often make a dobbing rig at some point in november and it'll still be going often end of march sort of time so that pretty much covered with the rig to so say we've got 012 hook length on pinged one of me one of me bits of silicon off 012 hook length and the last bit is the hook and this is where you don't need to be shy there's no need for little delicate hooks when you're dobbing and in today's case i've got a lovely big pellet style hook i mean the sort of um, hooks that you'd use to fishing soft pellets with i mean be it a b911 a, um what are we on what do you use and sfls with the preston ones um, a guru f1 pellet in the matrix ones it'd be an mtx one probably but in a 16 i mean a decent lump of metal you don't want anything too soft because you're going to pull quite hard but a big 16 because whatever bait i'm going to use it's it can handle it sort of thing i mean a big bit of bread will swell up three or four maggots or a piece of corn there's no need for messing about with little tiny hooks so that's basically it as you see really 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 simple type rig can stick it wherever I want in my peg but first before I dob it about I do just want to have a little idea of what the depth is which I'm going to show you next and then how I set my rig after I've done that so rig all sorted what I do want to do before I have a little dob is just get a rough idea of the depth of the peg but the last thing I want to do is drop a plummet all over the place yeah you have to assume there's little pockets of fish sat on all these potential areas where I could catch one so the last thing I want to do drop a plummet in disturb them potentially not catch some fish so all i want to do is plumb up once so in today's case because i'm a bit unsure of how deep it is on this one i'm literally going to ship out i've got my rig set at what am i on there two and a half foot and all i want to know is the shallowest point do you know what I mean i might have a quick look in the middle there if i drop it down middle that rig goes all the way down gone so i know it's sort of five foot plus down the middle but when it comes to a cross 
you can see I've shipped out with my plummet out the water so I'm not bumping it into it bumping it into any fish upsetting anything well, all I'm gonna do is drop it so I have had a sneaky look at this already tight against the far bank and you can see that's how deep it is so I know that's full depth yeah I don't need to set it at that I'm not plumbing up to fish at full depth all I want is a rough idea so I know that along there if I check it pretty much that's full depth yeah literally I'm not gonna drop my plummet anywhere else I'd like to I don't want to all it'll do is potentially upset fish so I'm happy that the that is going to be the pretty much might go a bit shallower further back there that's going to be the shallowest point of my peg and what I can do now is just reference that is whiz back proper blue peter moment here's one I've done earlier and you can see what I'll do is literally if I'm unsure I'll mark the depth on my pole with a little bit of tip x so it's nice and rough so I've got it ready marked you see there I know that that's the ultimate pretty much the shallowest I'm getting to be peg around this area and what I'm going to do now to start dobbing is take about six inches off that and that'll be the first area that I target so about six inches off bottom wherever I put it against those far bank features all along there I know I'm going to be pretty much six inches off the bottom that is the best area for me to begin with and what I'll do is I'll work that area if I've not caught any in that I might move it up a foot and I might drop into much deeper water but again I'm always fishing sort of six inches off bottom in most cases unless I feel it's not right for whatever reason and I might have a little try on the bottom but that's pretty much it I mean not a fancy thing you're literally targeting the areas and ultimately not upsetting the fish that's the biggest thing you need to get your head around with Dobbin is that everything that you do be it plumbing up not feeding just dropping that one delicate bait in it's just not upsetting them fish and getting those few extra bites when the fish aren't feeding right you lot very very sorry to interrupt your video watching how dare you quickly if you haven't already noticed we have managed to write a book haven't we yes we have which Jamie. is full of all our very bestest methods and features or whatever else we do on this wonderful subject of fishing so if you haven't had a look already go and have a look at winningways.shop and buy one for yourself